or should be construed or interpreted to amend, repeal, affect, restrict, or preempt laws pertaining to the compassionate use of 1996. That seems like it's a protection, but in reality it's not. and everything should be construed or interpreted to repeal, effect, or restrict, or preempt the Compassionate Use Act of 1996. They say laws pertaining to the Compassionate Use Act of 1996. Now, what's that, well, what, what that is doing is basically it is saying any law that pertains to the Compassionate Use Act is what we're talking about here. So MRSA, that's a law pertaining to the Compassionate Use Act. As before 20 as a law. Every city, local, local laws that they passed regarding medical marijuana is a law pertaining to the bad music. So basically what they're doing is they're validating all those laws. They're using that, those two words pertaining to, laws pertaining to the bad music. Okay, so that kind of is crazy. prison time and, and all that, I think that, uh, that outlaw preserves, like, you can still go to jail for, you can go to prison for possessing more than one ounce of pot of school grounds, for example, so if you're like an 18 year old and you bring a sack of weed onto your school grounds, uh, you can be at prison time still, and, you know, there's a whole bunch of, they didn't do much on that in terms of uh, making that better for us. Okay, here's, here's another, uh, another sneaky way that, um, that uh, Alma uh, kind of crushes uh, the Capacity Use Act. It is 11362.712, provided that after January 1st, 2018, all patients must have an ID card or recommendation that complies with the new restrictions from MRSA placed on doctors who are recommending cannabis. These restrictions severely limit a doctor's right to be free from punishment for having recommended marijuana to a patient for medical purposes. And that's a quote from the Compassionate Use Act. That's what the Compassionate Use Act allows or, or protects doctors with that, with that language right there. It also contains a, a meaningless statement that this requirement shall not, however, affect any of the protections provided to patients or their primary caregivers by Section 11362.5, the Compassionate Use Act. But notably missing in there is a reference to the protections given to, in 215 to the doctors. Because what they're going to do is they're not going to go after the patients. They're going after the doctors. The doctors are going to go after the patients. So what they're going to do is they're going to make sure the doctors are scared to death to recommend medical cannabis to anybody but the most seriously ill patient. And so that's kind of why they accidentally left those protections out in the statement. They protect the patients and they protect their caregivers they don't protect the doctors. So when as we move along and we and we see how they're coming down hard on the doctors here, 
and it becomes clear that medical thought is going to be shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. When we, okay, when we get to that, there's a somewhere in here. I think it's right here. Yeah. Where, the, where they uh, define, they define um, medical use is restricted to seriously ill patients. Then they, they, they take that out of, they parse that out of SB 420. Um, but seriously ill patients is the new standard for, for the doctors. So that's how they're going after the doctors and scaring them. So they're going to shrink the medical market down to nothing through killing the doctors. Okay, now 11362.85. Upon a determination by the California Attorney General that the federal schedule of controlled substances has been amended to reclassify or declassify marijuana, the legislature may amend or repeal provisions of the Health and Safety Code as necessary to conform state law to such changes in federal law. You guys follow what that said? Upon a determination by the California Attorney General that the feds are now going to take over, decided to take over, the legislature may amend or repeal repeal the provisions of the Health and Safety Code. That's everything that's in here, all the stuff that's in here, that's Proposition 420, that's the Compassionate Use Act, all of those can be repealed if they do not conform state law to such changes in federal law, quote unquote. We would have a blatant takeover by the federal government if the federal government decided they want to take over. That is California voting to give up their state's rights to the federal government concerning marijuana. That right there, that alone should be enough to scare everyone to death. Five minutes, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, why don't, why don't I let him speak? Okay, get there's a few more good points in here, but uh, that was the biggest point right there, the federal takeover. While he's speaking, I'll come up with a brief summary of the other points that kill medical marijuana because I haven't gotten to them yet. We're killing it, but we haven't killed it yet. Thank you, buddy. Sorry we had to cut buddy short. You know, we... Um, Sorry, it took a long time. I wasn't able to prepare this into a report like I wanted to, so I'm just working for notes. And just, because uh, this is supposed to, this is all my notes for a report that I'm preparing and kind of it together. And most notably, he's works with the fire prevention industry, so he's been working full time down in Simi Valley. So for him to even come up. Well, we we had honored you all, Dennis and John, earlier just to kick off this right. night. And now, without further ado, the authors of Prop 215 gracing us here in Santa Cruz. Thank you, Dennis and John, for coming. Thank you. Thank
like 19, legalized marijuana. Except he ain't blowing the good, sir. He just blowing. So I'm not saying so don't want to have any fun. The head second have fun. The recreational. The bad. Recreational is just the way of trivializing our pain. You think they don't really need it. But we don't. Maybe we don't. We don't need their loyalty, though. We don't need their Recreational bullshit. There's no such thing as recreational marijuana. It is. Like, I've been just trying to demonstrate to me what it is. It's like, I, got, I got a lot of credit for Prop 215. I'm sorry. But John, you know, helped me get, to, get through all the bullshit. We should have lied. The cannabis club, the cops. I'll say every day of my life, yeah. you walk around, I wish I'd see cops, but I'm not afraid of them anymore. And John's part of the reason I'm not happy either. There's me no either. John is so. That's as simple as that. Um, following Dennis, of course, is impossible. We talked about this all the way up, and then he just blew me away with what he just said. I don't know about you guys. I think he's actually just hit it right on the head. What we have is a really great thing. It's gone to the Supreme Court three times. Uh, it's uh, gone through the appellate court process numerous times. These are walking on coal type challenges to send your law into that and to come out unscathed or minimally harmed is a great, great thing. And, I, and really, I remember what Dennis said. We all remember what Dennis said. Scott, you remember, keep it short. How many times did the man say keep it short, right? I mean, short, like half a page. I mean, and two pages. 274 words. Yeah, yeah, it was keep it short. And, and that really mattered because, and everyone contributed words. And you remember, we, we spent six months as a, as a state, activists up and down the state, everyone screaming and yelling about every goddamn word in the initiative. And what it meant. And we scrapped words and changed words and studied words. And there isn't a word in there we don't really know, okay? Those 200 whatever number of words, we know those. We knew what each one of them means, believe it or not. Every one of them. And, and that brings us to the, to, and we had a, what, we want a way back machine here. Let's go back to 215 for a second. Why did we do that? I mean, we did an initiative because we had a problem. We had a problem that the government wasn't going to solve. That's the basic prime of it. That's why you do initiatives. Okay? It's, it's, not, it's kind of unusual. Usually the government meddles with everything. And yet at the time, we really knew this was a great medicine. It was helping a lot of people. And we pretty much knew. I mean, we put two bills on the governor, governor's desk and he vetoed them both because they had the word marijuana in them, basically. So we know where we were going. Okay? Now, let's jump back to the present and, and, and look at what we have. We don't really have a problem per se. I don't see it. Okay, and if you can't get pot in California today, you know, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> That's probably an excuse to get a pot right there. For real, there's no bodies. There's nobody uh, that they can put on TV tonight that, that's going to make a case that they really need this recreational pot right now. So that's the first thing. There is, there is no body on the ground. There's no basic reason to do this. Second, okay, Second thing that you got to have an initiative is obstructive government, and we don't have that. Last I checked, they just passed MRSA, which I don't really. We're going to be fighting part of that in court, but by God, it definitely shows a you know a willingness to write and legislate in this area, and and it is an interesting thing. I'm not sure that we object to everything in there either. I mean, uh, some of it we're going to object to for sure, but some of it's kind of cool. I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of in some ways, and at least Jerry gave lip service and kept the concept of medical marijuana. He framed his whole thing within medical marijuana and creative. Well, you know, there's a lot to explore in there. Um, next, next thing. So, so we don't really have a problem, and we don't have an obstructive government. And then the last criticism of this Alma thing is it, it's 
It doesn't have any input. Like I said, we struggled over those words for six months, at least, up and down, 50 drafts through Ledge Council, everybody. Now, where's the Alma process? What they did is they he hired a couple of guys. They basically grabbed marijuana text from any law they could get, sprung it all together, you know. And then the next step is they were under pressure for time. So they get this thing as good as they can get it. I'm not saying that they didn't try, but they got it as good as they could get it. And then they went and they hired a political consultant. And we have some direct experience with that. And these guys are very charismatic, very powerful people. They have a very small number of them in the state of California. And every year they go out and round up millionaires and put things on the ballot and move things and shake things. And when these guys get you, they get you. They tell everybody to shut up. We've been through this personally. We're all told to shut up and let the consultant run the show and do everything, control the message, I think they'd like to call it. And then once you're at that point, so you got this terrible law, really badly written, and then the consultant gets his hands on it. He's all clutchy. He doesn't want all our all this employed. He doesn't want anybody competing for the dollars or the, anything, changing the message. So the next thing you know, they're running this product straight to market, and that's what we've got now. A really badly written, really hastily written thing that's going to do a lot of damage. So just on the top, it just, I mean, just doesn't pass the smell test. Why would you want to do this? Why would you want to do it this way? We're just supposed to accept a slogan. Legalize marijuana. And then we're supposed to accept the corollary to that, that it's, we're, we're trying to legalize recreational marijuana. And like I say, you know, we're not going to get the recreational marijuana user on the news tonight to say, hi, I, I'm not medical, I'm merely recreating Here's my story, and here's why you should back me. And, and to this day, as Dennis likes to point out, they've never been able to define this recreational marijuana. Uh, as he points out, it's a, it's a trivialization of our medical, but, but the, the other way to put it is, it's not medical. That's about the only definition we can get about it. It's not medical. So, you know, I mean, that's a pretty big bucket of water on the face of every one of us who've had all this medical experience. You know, some of us didn't know it before, but we found out we were using it medically. Now all of a sudden we find out that we aren't using it medically anymore. It's like, wow, we're not light switches here. You know. So just a couple couple thoughts. Um, what Dave was saying, I just want to reiterate, because I read through um, Ahmed's, I haven't read through the whole thing. It's 60 pages, man. Who wants to do that? I usually throw up by about page 12. I just lose it, you know, I just lose it. So I just want to thank Dave a lot for, for waiting. Buddy, Christ help me. Huh. I'm famous for that. I'm really bad at names. I want to thank Buddy because what you did is really deep. Everything you said, I was listening, and a lot of the points you made of the stuff I've seen in there, and it's, it's disheartening. The stuff that says they can rewrite Prop 215, throw it out after they reschedule the Schedule 2. That's insane. Who wants to be caught between that? And it doesn't say they scrap Alma if the federal government, you know what I mean? That's kind of really weird, too. So they're going to, you know, anyway. But just thank you because you know, a lot of these specific reasons and, and the logic of affirming the bad ideas that Governor Brown has just put forward and doing some affirming some of these other things through the initiative process is really dangerous. It's an abuse of the initiative process once again. So, you know, thank you for doing all that hard work. Everything you said is absolutely true. And we echo all your points. Uh, but, you know, like I said, we're just going to maintain that it's too long. It's poorly thought out. It would be a big setback. We don't want to see this thing go through the appellate court system. We don't want to see it starting to affect medical users and have people go through that process. And last thing, and this is the other thing. Right now, what is it? Under announced possession is an infraction in the state of California. Thank you, Mr. Schwarzenegger. Okay. And maybe some credit goes to the 19 guys for pushing it that way. Okay. Um, but it's an infraction and it's under announced. Now, what we're going to do, and that's the same area Alma is, is going. If Alma's going to go into that it's an infraction and turn turn that sentence, it's an infraction, into it's a telephone book. Sixty-five pages of rules and regulations to carve an industry out of under announced possession. And I think that's offensive. It's offensive and, and and if it was successful and they were to squeeze all this money out of us, uh, and direct it in the ways they say, I think that would be wrong also. I think that the real value of marijuana is that it's it's cheap and powerful and should be available to everybody that needs it when they need it for all the obvious reasons. So the society benefits, we all benefit. You know, how many 
how many people we can get off alcohol, how many people we can, you know, successfully break through chemo. It just increases the efficacy of the workplace and makes our world a better place to live in. So, like Dennis said, we have a good thing right now, and I'm glad that so many people in the room here are willing to defend that good thing. And I urge everybody to go forward, use the pen and paper, use our ability to write, use social media, and, and reach out and try to get some editorials against this thing, try to get some letters to the editor. They are, yeah, they're, the chances are they may not win. Because statistically, a lot of people say they're going to vote for gay marriage, but actually don't really mean it when they go into the poll. And a lot of people say they're pro-marijuana, but don't really mean it when they go into the poll. There's like a bias that when you study these polls, you'll see this. These guys need over 50%. I don't think they can get it. I pray they can. And, and every point we can erode, every little bit we can erode from them, keeps them from getting that. All we need is 49.9 and we win. So uh, thank you everybody for being here. John and Dennis and Scott and everyone who, Buddy, Mike, and I know that Buddy did get through, you know, the whole thing. So what we're hoping tonight is we can replicate this um, and bring Dennis and John and everybody, Scott and Pat um, on the road and take this. We have a big mission, and I prefaced this event not talking about Bernie Sanders and whether or not you supported him or not, but he, we have to do what he did. We have to organize and do mass rallies against this and put it in the connotations, as I mentioned earlier, about control. This is corporations wanting to control us. We all know the fight against corporations is big, corporatism. And that's the connotation Pat and I tried to bring in earlier that, that Dennis and John had missed. So we want to replicate this. We want to go to San Francisco, um, Sacramento, San Francisco, the Bay Area, Berkeley, Southern California, Mendocino, Humboldt, Nevada City, all in the context of 2018, of protecting Prop 215, but in 2018, of course, we're going to be proactive. Well, we would like to think so, and that's going to connotate raising a million dollars at least, which is a separate thing. So. We're hoping we can bring Dennis and John and Buddy and all of us go take this on tour to other cities and let Buddy, you know, have a full hour next time to go through. Well, next time I'll have this in a report. So just yeah, and again, Buddy, you know, he's been working fighting fires down in Simi Valley or down in Los Angeles, so he, he he's been working full time. So again, thank you all. And originally, from eight to nine, we're going to have you know a little bit of a question and answer. But but the building closes at nine. So if some of us want to keep the conversation, we can go to a cafe or something after. And again, and Scott wanted to ask, make sure if you can sign on the, both of our mailing lists, Pat and and ours, and, and Scott. Uh, I'm just wondering about the the tape that's being made. Is that going to be available? Yeah, we, we're going to, in regard to the tape, we're going to have this immediately, you know, figure out the ways with YouTube and, inter yeah, so that, and Sasha from, Sasha Brodsky is helping sponsor this um, video, so, because Elijah is a professional um, videographer, and I want to thank you, Elijah, for, you know, taking your Saturday night to, to video. So, to answer your question soon, We'll take this format and put it up, you know, on YouTube and have it, yeah, we'll have the whole night to um, have um, available. Hopefully, we can get Elijah to make a video. <laughs> and, and Santa Cruz Photos is Elijah's. This guy films Mavericks and all the big waves. So, um, so yeah, so to answer your question, yes, we will have this um, available, especially with the social media. And, well, this is about done. So we have this fight. Um, one of the fights is social media. In Ohio, you know, they, through social media, we helped topple Ohio's Prop Amendment 2. And they had 10 million, and we had nothing as far as the resistance. So the whole, what are we going to do to defeat this is probably going to require a whole other meeting of which we want to probably organize one within the month. We don't have a lot of time to defeat this law. 
we only have through no, you know, November. And as Lynette had said, most of the average person does not know that it thinks this is a good thing because this is one of the first events against this bill as far as a public forum. So for the social media aspect, what can people do? Go to your local hall, let's rent, you know, event space so we can invite, let's try to do a little tour to um, stop this and promote, promote, you know, full legalization in 2018, but stop this law. And we just were scratching the surface tonight, and I realized all of us will probably have a lot more questions about what the 1% is planning on us with this. So again, thank you. Make sure if you can to sign our mailing list for those that you know aren't on. And we'll probably continue this at the Saturn Cafe or somewhere outside. Um, and I, I thank everyone again for, and just to, to quote Angela Davis again, is you know, radical the definition is to, to take something out by the roots. So let's take this prohibition out by the roots. Let's let's not let these corporations take control of this plan. Let's preserve Prop 215 and look to, you know, the, the real ending of prohibition as far as the complete industrial and to make it like the, the beer and wine industry in 2018, or at least leave it like it is for now, and then, yeah, work on 2018. And again, thank you all. Our voices are powerful in this kind of corporatism trying to smother us, and with the Trump and the, the Clinton, you know, corporate puppets. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you, Pat, for all your work on the Cannabis Advocates Alliance, and Dennis and John. Thank you for coming. Much, much love for everyone. Thank you. Maybe we can get a photo with Dennis and John and everyone that wants to.